Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! The time has come for my personal favorite, not just out of the Eeveelutions, but all Pokemon in general. Jolteon, the lightning Pokemon! Now, while any Eevee can be either male or female, I've always seen Jolteon as the tough love bad boy character of the bunch, so I'm going to make my interpretation of the character male this time. Picking up on his dominant design trait, I came up with four spiky yellow designs. With some great critique from you guys on Instagram, I ended up with a combination of two and three. His color palette was difficult to portray as masculine. Obviously yellow had to be the primary color, while white and dark purple came in secondarily. But having a ton of bright yellow and white in a design tends to come across as happy and feminine, so I had to tread cautiously. I cut the monochromatic design for that reason. I thought it was just too much yellow. In the end, we worked together and I got this. Picking up on the purple of Jolteon's ears and eyes to give the doll a striking complementary color scheme looks very handsome. I hope you think so too. Let's get started on the doll. I'll be using Heath Burns from Monster High as a base. I consider myself very lucky I even had this doll. Boy dolls are pretty rare. I picked him up in stores a long time ago when he came out in that two-pack. Anyway, he is beyond perfect for Jolteon. He's yellow, he has sharp pointed features like his jaw and hairline. It's destiny. I was in a sewing mood last week, so I started with the clothes for once. Basing Jolteon's outfit off of a pattern I copied from an existing doll, see my how to make doll clothes video, I sketched out a new pattern. Of course, things don't always go the way we want them to on our first try, so in this case I added a little back panel and fudged the rest. Hey, it's in the back, no one's gonna see it, right? To achieve those jagged, spiky edges of his jacket, I'm literally going to rough it up a bit. I found that it's hard to make worn edges believable and less costumey unless you go at it with a little recklessness. The idea is to make it look like it's happened naturally, so don't think too hard about it when you're placing the cuts and rips. His costume, hair, and ears all require brush yarned wefts, which is what I'm preparing here. Make sure to check out my friend Mozekito's yarn weft tutorial if you're interested in making them. So fluffy! With a plethora of those little guys prepared, I stitch them to the underside of his coat, tails, and jacket. I stitched these on a separate yellow piece so that the awkward stitches wouldn't show up on the back of his jacket. To aid in the roughed up look, I'm taking watered down acrylic paint and painting around the edges. Once that's dry, I'm also going to dab on some sparkling gold Pearl X powders. This was a neat idea from an Instagram commenter to make the doll appear more electrifying. It's a subtle effect, but very cool. Taking this beautiful pair of shoes from an Ever After High doll, Alistair Wonderland I think, I'm going to repaint and accentuate the sculpted details to make them match my custom. I'm using acrylic paint and a little dry brushing to make them look worn. Next up is the armor. Now I like asymmetrical armor design just because it looks cool, but that also means you only have to make one arm's worth of armor. <laughs> nice! I'll be making this out of craft foam, hot glue, fabric paint, and other materials to achieve a lightweight armor. For a detailed tutorial on how to make doll armor, click the link in the description or at the end of the video. It looks great as a final product, but it really isn't too hard to do, so check it out. For his tiny gauntlet, I'll be mixing equal parts of epoxy sculpt, available on Amazon. Be patient and work with a toothpick to get in those tiny details. To seal in all that acrylic paint and sparkly powder, I'm going to cut Derek Clear matte varnish with water and coat every piece two times. Let's make his ears. With a wire base, which I'll use to poke through his head later, I block out the general diamond shape with more epoxy sculpt. Once that's dry, I paint it, then layer on more brushed yarn fluff from tip to base. With all the accessories and outfit made, it's time for his makeover. First off, I want to point out something I've never seen in a doll before, a factory mistake. Believe it or not, this doll was accidentally given two left upper arms. You can see from the musculature sculpting and the seam lines. <laughs> because it's backwards, he can't bend his elbow properly. An easy fix with a box cutter, but pretty funny. Pulling off his molded flame hair wasn't easy. 
basically take a file-shaped object and pry it apart from his head. I found the most glue above each temple and above his forehead, so be cautious around those areas. With enough force, it eventually should pop off. Now poor Heath is left with this awkward head indention, which we're going to fill with more epoxy. All we want to do is complete his head again so that we can glue on his hair later. I sanded the edges down, but was very careful not to scratch up his vinyl face too much. That would make the face up more difficult. Remove the factory paint with acetone and Q-tips. And here he is wiped clean. He's got a very handsome mold. I think out of all the male dolls I've seen, he's my favorite. With acrylic paint, I match the epoxy color to his skin the best I can. Then, taking Mungyo Soft Pastels, I give a little blushing to his body around the joints. I thought it was looking pretty good until I realized he was the color of delicious buttery popcorn. Then he just made me hungry. Anyway, the next step is to spray the doll two to three times with your sealant, waiting a good 30 minutes in between each spray. Make sure you do this in a ventilated area. With the pastel stage already in place, I go in with my watercolor pencils. I'm already fond of Heath's face mold, so I'm going to follow the guidelines fairly strictly this time. With an orange pencil, I outline the eyes, sketch in the iris shape, and darken the corners of his mouth. Next, I sketch in the basic shapes of his eyebrows. Like the rest of the design, they're meant to look spiky and triangular. I also sketch in the scar over his right eye before adding some other colors. I was really excited about his scar and blind eye design. It adds to his tough guy character, but because he's clearly an anime style pretty boy, the scar is in no way demeaning. <laughs> like Final Fantasy characters or Prince Zuko from Avatar. With the base colors in place, I spray the doll again with sealant so I can continue to build colors and values. Taking a white pencil, I add a few highlights to start separating elements of his face. Then continue to build up with whites of his eyes, the colors of his irises, and darken his lash line and eyebrows with a dark orange or brown pencil. Working on some lights in the center of the scar and some pinks around the edges, I try to make it look a tad more realistic. I also highlighted the edges with white to separate it from the surrounding skin. And his cute little Jolteon nose. I say Jolteon's my favorite, but it's actually hard to choose. I love Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Scyther, Pidgeotto, Skarmory, uh, Suicune because it's the only legendary I ever caught in the older games. Lyron is cool, Arkin, Galvantula, Skidoo, Litten and Rowlet, uh, Bubble-Headed Alolan Persian. <laughs> Gosh, I could go on forever, but do you guys have one favorite or do you have a whole list like I do? To finish up and add some pop, the last step I do is add a little acrylic paint on top. I bring out highlights in his eyes with whites and purples before adding that finishing highlight. I made an oblong shape this time to match the Pokemon's artwork. And before I spray him one last time with MSC, I'm going to sketch in some hair guidelines that will help me out when we glue on his hair. Once he's dried a final time, I take a glossy varnish to give a spark of life to those matte eyes, lips, and nose. Taking those wefts we prepared earlier and some fast drying Elmer's glue, which is this jar, Trust me, it stopped being salsa a long time ago. We can begin. First, I mark the center back of his head. Then, taking a strip of wefts, I roll it into a cylinder and seal it together with a dab of glue. Once that's dry, I glued it to the center back of his hairstyle. Once that's good and dry, I spiral around this weft with new ones, radiating out from the center. He's looking more ridiculous by the minute. Once you're pretty close to the hairline, it's time to shift gears. Instead of the glue weft edges showing, we want it to look like natural hair growing out of his temples, right? 
So taking some unfinished wefts, I'm going to cut off some yarn, apply a little glue to the hairline, and carefully apply it. Go slowly and layer it up if you have to, but do your best to keep the edges clean. If you put too much glue, take another brush dipped in water and wipe off the excess. I pet a tiny amount of glue on top of these wefts to ensure that they stay down at the ends. But we don't want too much. When the glue dries, it could discolor the yarn or look very obvious, so the less the glue shows, the better. Eventually, you will have worked your way around the hairline, and this is how he came out. Looks pretty natural. You can see I did a little better on the right side of his head compared to the left side, but overall I'm satisfied. To add variety to that solid yellow color, I'm taking pastel dust and brushing his hair with a darker color. I started in the back in case I didn't like it, and I'm glad I did. The first colors I used were way too red, so I adjusted my mixture and continued until the color fade was more subtle. As much as I love the Super Saiyan aesthetic, it's time for a trim. Eyeballing where I want the longest piece to end, which is in the back, I give his hair an initial whack, then refine it from there. Because I want Jolteon's hair to be spiky and choppy, I wasn't too worried about getting things completely even. Take your time when cutting doll hair and work it shorter slowly. It would be a shame to cut things too short because that wouldn't be an easy fix. Yarn is easily persuaded to clump, so with a little pinching, his spiky do is done. Let's put those ears on. I pierce a hole where I want to insert the wire first, then stop it in the ears. Because I didn't remove the doll's head this time, I'm going to secure them from the outside with a small blob of epoxy glue. Once this dries, I'll conceal the area with more yarn. And with that, Jolteon is all done! Let's assemble all the parts. probably biased because Jolteon's one of my favorite Pokemon, but I totally love this doll! He comes across as the tough guy exterior with a heart of gold protagonist I was hoping he'd be. While some folks did favor the lighter or less purple designs, I hope you still enjoyed the end product nonetheless. I may have followed my personal preference more closely this time because it's Jolteon, but I hope you like him too. I'm also pleased at how the group has such a variety of body types thanks to which face dolls were used too. Jolteon's monster high body is tall and lean, Umbreon is the more muscular ever after high body type, Eevee's got the little sister body, and so on. It really makes the family feel diverse from one another. I hope you found this video electrifying, and feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to help me design the next doll. I also have a merchandise store in Society6, so be sure to check that out if you want a cute, delightful mug or this pastel-tastic background I always use. Whew, I know it's the middle of summer, but was that an icy chill I just felt? Thanks for watching, guys! Stay artsy! Annyeong!